It's time for real change in our city. Ray Scott Jr. for me! You want to give back to the city that's given unto you. Our city is at a crossroads. It's time to move us from being disconnected to connected. We have to have a Little Rock that's aspirational, a Little Rock that has a vision. We will lead this new Little Rock, a unified Little Rock, into the future. History made. Frank Scott Jr. becomes the capital city's first elected black mayor. He won with 58% of the vote over Baker Curris. Fox 16's Isabella Moeller joins us live from City Hall with reaction from our newly elected mayor. Good morning, Isabella. Hey, good morning, Ashley. Yeah, we're at City Hall this morning, and this will be Frank Scott Jr.'s new home come January. He won 58% of the vote, becoming the first elected African-American mayor in Little Rock. Now, Little Rock's first and second African-American mayors were both appointed, so they weren't exactly the first elected, of course. They were just appointed by the City Board of Directors. Charles Bussey served from 1981 to 1982, and then Lottie Shackelford served from 1987 to 1988. This win didn't come without a fight last night. Both Scott and his opponent, Baker Curris, had to win over areas that previously were won by former candidate Warwick Sabin. And the early numbers show that Baker and Scott, they both took about 50-50 showed in Little Rock is that we can have a civil and cordial race amongst one another. So I commend him and his team. And to anybody who did not vote for Frank Scott Jr., I'm asking, give me the opportunity to earn your vote. My mission stays the same since September 12, 2017. It's to unify this city, moving it from being disconnected to connected. During his victory speech, Scott also commended Baker Curris and his family for running a great campaign. To see that full victory speech, you can go to our website, fox16.com. And come January, this will be Frank Scott Jr.'s new home. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Isabella. Now, over at Rocktown Distillery, Scott's opponent, Baker Curris, delivered his concession speech in front of his supporters. Now, Curris had about 42% of the vote, and since the beginning of his campaign, he said he wants to serve Little Rock, and now it will just look different than he planned. I want to serve. I want to help. I want to, I want to make this a town that's, that's vibrant and inclusive and, and, and special, and I'll... There, there's got to be a plan. I don't know what it is. I'll, I'll have to wait and see. Curris ended his speech saying it's important to support our next mayor and bring the city together. Little Rock's board of directors is considering a tighter budget for 2019. Outgoing mayor Mark Stodola says the proposed budget will spend about $370,000 less than the city did in 2018. The focus will be on providing core services to citizens such as police, fire, and other public safety services, including resurfacing streets. At the moment, it doesn't mean any increase for non-union uh, and non-uniform employees. So we're going to be looking at that, obviously, myself, the city manager, the board of directors, all would like to see how we can provide some benefit to all of our, all of our employees. Mayor Stodola says he is looking into a bonus of some sort rather than a raise for those non-uniform employees. City directors will vote on the budget at their December 18th meeting. Washington's final farewell to our 41st president gets underway in just a few hours. The nation is saying goodbye to President George Herbert Walker Bush. It also marks the National Day of Mourning to honor the former president. Services will be held later today at Washington National Cathedral. We will have a live report from Washington coming up at 720. New this morning, a DEA special agent finds himself on the wrong side of the law. Investigators arrested 42-year-old Nathan Cohen for bribery and drug conspiracy charges. The federal complaint says Cohen accepted multiple cash payments from a known drug dealer from 2016 to 2018 in exchange for providing information which assisted the drug dealer's criminal activities. A Hot Springs woman with a warning this morning about an electric bill scam. She says she received a call saying her energy bill was overdue and the power would be shut off in an hour if she didn't pay. That set off some red flags, so she called the Attorney General's office, which knew about the scam, as did Energy. Now this woman wants to warn other potential victims. Somebody that may have a late bill that is behind on their bill may be taken advantage by this number. Oh, when she called back later in the day, the number had been disconnected. 
always remember, you should never provide your personal information over the phone to someone who calls asking for it.